Hi, I'm Yumna, and today we're making falafel. I know a lot of you guys might call it falafel, but um, in Lebanon we call it falafel, and so that's kind of like the correct Arabic way to say it. This is a very popular, iconic street food um, in Lebanon and all over the Middle East, actually. And um, if you buy it store uh, store made, sometimes it's just filled with a lot of oil, a lot of preservatives, um, so it's really easy to actually make it at home. You just need very few staple ingredients, um, throw it all together in a blender, fry it up or bake it, and um, you've got falafel. And um, falafel is so great because it's vegan, it's gluten-free, and um, it's very filling as well. So you get like a nice source of protein that's all plant-based. Um, that's the first step here. We're going to um, get the chickpeas prepared. This is what I buy, dry chickpeas or, or garbanzo beans. And if you look at them, they are pretty stiff, they're really small, and um, they kind of look like they're shrunken. So these are dry, they're not cooked, um, and what we're gonna do is we want to soak them. And so when you soak them overnight, these have been soaking overnight for 24 hours, you can see the difference in the texture. You hold them both of them to up together. So you can see the difference. And overnight, the chickpeas literally grew times two. So they doubled in size, and now they're actually ready for the recipe. We don't want to actually cook them. All we want to do is soak them in some water overnight. You can also put some baking soda in it if you want to, but that's not really necessary. Um, a very important step is a lot of people ask me, well, can I just use canned chickpeas? Like, what's the point of actually soaking these? And, you know, if you're going to get them to um, soak and plump up, why not just use canned chickpeas? And um, it's very important not to use canned chickpeas because if you do, they actually have a lot of moisture in them. There's a lot of water um, content um, when, they, when, they're, um, in, when they're canned. So you want to avoid doing that because with all that moisture in the chickpeas, you have to compensate for it by adding more flour. And adding more flour just completely ruins the texture of the falafel and the way it's actually supposed to be made. Now that we have the chickpeas soaked and we know the importance of using soaked dry chickpeas and not canned chickpeas, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So all of this in water, I'm going to um, just drain it and rinse it up. So we've got the drained chickpeas. And you can also take a paper towel Take a paper towel and just dry it up a little bit. Um, doesn't have to be completely dry, but um, just run the paper towel through it just to kind of absorb any of that extra liquid in there. And now we're ready to make the falafel. So um, I use a 13 cup or 11 or 13 cup food processor. And for this much, it actually doesn't fit the whole recipe in there. So I just divide it in two and uh, I make two batches. You can also cut the batch in half if you wanted to. So we're going to go ahead and drop the chickpeas in here. All right, so that's um, the chickpeas that are, are now in the food processor. And before I add the herbs and the spices and the onions and garlic, what we wanna do is um, grate the, uh, the chickpeas so they're nice and uh, paste-like. So we'll get started with that. All right, so the chickpeas are ready. If you look here, it's kind of like powder-like and grain-like and so the chickpeas have just been cut a little bit finer. So this is exactly what we're looking for. That's the consistency that you want. And so now what we're gonna do is add the rest of the ingredients to the falafel mix. We're going to use, um, normally it would, I'm, I'm basically halving everything. So we're going to use some cilantro. I'm gonna use about half of everything. We'll also use some parsley. If you don't like parsley or you don't like cilantro, you can do only one of the kinds. Um, I like the mix of both of them because cilantro has a more uh, stronger taste and parsley um, just gives it that nice color and just a more mild um, fragrance to it. So this is the parsley. We're also going to add a garlic clove in here and probably like half, the sm half a small onion. We'll add also um, just a tablespoon of flour just to kind of help bind everything together. The, the flour is not really crucial in here, but I like to add it um, just to kind of suck up any of that moisture. So we'll just do about a tablespoon of it in here. And now for the seasoning, um, definitely add some salt. So in the half mixture, I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt. This is cumin. We'll do half a teaspoon of cumin and then also some coriander. You can also add um, allspice if you'd like, or seven spice. You can add some other types of seasonings like cayenne pepper if you want it a little bit spicy. I just like to stick to these, um, you know, basic salt, pepper, cumin, and coriander. Also add some pepper to it. 
And the seasoning can be eyeballed too. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, these are some good guidelines for you to follow, um, but it doesn't have to be exact and you can add more or less of any seasonings that you like. So now we have everything in the blender and we are going to get the food processor going. Okay, let's check up on it. All right, it looks like it's all ready. If you look at this here, it's got a nice, beautiful green color. You can see that, um, you know, the onions are fine now. You can't even see them. The parsley and cilantro are, are nice and grated. And this is the kind of consistency we're looking for. It's, um, it's pasty and moist, and it kind of sticks together. If you form on, if you, if you push down on it, you can see that it kind of keeps the form whatever you push on it. And that's when you know that it's ready. It's not too dry, it's not too moist. Um, it's perfect. If you do find that um, it's looking a little wet, this is the part where you can add a little bit more flour. And if you are noticing that um, it's looking too dry, you can add a little bit of tablespoons of water. So it's pretty flexible at this point. You can kind of, um, you know, change it up and, and work with it to get this kind of texture right here. Okay, so this is the mixture now in the bowl and you can kind of see um, what, it's, what it looks like kind of get a better view of um, the consistency that you're looking for. So it's bright and green, it's uh, nice and pasty, and now um, you can go ahead and form the falafel balls, but what I would recommend is storing it in the fridge for an hour or two hours, just to let all the ingredients um, just meld well together, and it's just gonna give you a much better uh, recipe in the long run. So we'll go ahead and store this in the fridge, and uh, we'll come back to it in about a couple hours. All right, it's been a couple hours and the filet mixture has been resting in the fridge. So now it's ready to make them into balls. And before we do that, I like to add a little bit of baking soda to it and just give everything a good mix again. The baking soda will just help to make them fluffy. It's not completely necessary, but I like doing this right before I fry them. And I'm gonna show you the difference between frying them and baking them. So both of them are still gonna taste exactly the same, but the texture and the color is gonna look very different when you fry it versus baking it. And so I'll give you options for both. In order to make these, I'm gonna use this thing which is literally called a falafel scooper. So it's made just for falafel. It gets the perfect little patties um, that you normally see at restaurants. Um, you can also use a meatballer, you can use a cookie scooper, you can just use your hands even. So I'm gonna take this, place it in here, and then just pat it down and then it pops right out. You can see it just makes like perfect little circles that are about an inch and a half um, in diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these here. And I'm just gonna create two trays, one for baking, one for frying. Okay, so I just finished making all the filet patties and now what we're gonna do is we're going to fry some of them while the others are baking in the oven. So um, I have in here like an inch of grapeseed oil, which is really good for frying. And I'm just gonna uh, very carefully drop them in. And you can see as soon as I drop them in, there's a little bit of a bubbly action happening. So I prefer to do four at a time and I don't like to crowd the pan too much. Just throw four in there. And I should probably do this using a slotted spoon just to be safer. What we're looking for is uh, two to three minutes per side and we want them to get a nice brown color on the outside. So you can kind of try to start taking little peaks to see what it's looking like or just wait for it to release itself. It's also very popular to put some sesame seeds on the outside of these so um, you can, can do that on some of them. And just pat it down if you do. I'll put it on some and not others. Beautiful dark brown color. That's exactly what we're looking for. And it's okay if the inside is a little bit uh, green still, that is no problem. So let's go ahead and start flipping these. And you can tell that they're starting to brown because on the sides of them is brown. So there's no need to even like peek through. And you can see this is exactly what we're looking for right here. You see how it's a dark brown, nice golden brown um, color on the falafel. That's exactly what we're looking for. And then that's the time to flip them. So we'll do two to three minutes on the other side as well. And you can try to see um, you can take a peek and just see once they're getting that golden color to them. All right, so I just checked on it and it's also golden brown on the other side as well. So what we'll do is when we take them out of the oil, put them on a paper towel so that can absorb a lot of that extra excess oil that we don't need to eat. So we'll take this and just place it on a paper towel. All right, so the fried filet fill is done and this is what it looks like. Beautiful golden brown, and there's some sesame seeds on top of them. This is the baked filet which still looks pretty beautiful, but I think 
just texture wise and color wise the fried one just wins it wins it over for me um, if you are trying to watch um, your oil intake um, the baked one is a great way to go um, and still really soft and it still tastes the same way it's, a, it's still the same mixture essentially so what we like to do in my family is we like to make sandwiches with this uh, you can just take this and dip it in there if you wanted something um, kind of more low carb but we love making sandwiches so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a pita so we line up the filet fill and we don't go cheap. I mean, we line up like four in there, like nice and hearty. And then also um, put in some tomatoes. Go ahead and make a nice sandwich out of it. Some onions, some pickles. These are really small Arabic style types of pickles, which go really well with the filet fill. And then finally, um, what we like to do is we like to add a tangy sauce to it. So I'll link it below so you guys can make this. It's only four ingredients. It's tangy paste garlic, lemon juice, and salt. I mean, literally that's all it takes and you whip it all together and it just forms this smooth, nutty, garlicky, tangy, perfect dressing that goes with the filet fill. So I like to just add it on top. And finally, just put in some fresh parsley. You can also put in some lettuce if you wanted to, some turnips, there's lots of different uh, vegetables that you can do with this. So now you um, can eat this, roll it all up and have it like a sandwich and you're good to go. And this is what it looks like. You've got all kinds of colors in here, all kinds of texture, and this sandwich is so yummy. You can also take this and toast it if you wanted to, or just enjoy it as is, with a side of fries, with a side of salad, uh, whatever you like. I hope you try this filet recipe, whether you make it baked, whether you make it fried, um, just let me know how you like it, and um, I hope you share some pictures with me, share some comments, and let me know um, if you enjoyed this, and if you think it's better than the restaurant kind. My video man, <laughs> do you wanna try some filet You wanna try the sandwich? Just a regular one. All right, we're gonna give him a nice fried one, I think is what he'll enjoy. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it for him in some tangy sauce and see how he likes it. All right, so here you go. Awesome, we got a thumbs up from him. I'm so glad to hear that you like it and I hope you guys like it too and I hope you make this recipe, share it with your friends and family and share it with me too because I love to see your recreations. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up two thumbs up, as many thumbs up as you like, and go ahead and also hit the subscribe button because it really helps uh, more people see my video and um, make these recipes, and uh, it helps me know that you guys like these videos so that I can create more healthy, feel-good recipes. Thank you, guys.